Hi, my name is Judy, and I'm a math educator from Colorado. Hello, I'm Betty, a math educator from South Carolina. We're going to explore an activity about the vertex form of a quadratic function. This activity is based on the activity vertex and factored forms of a quadratic function, and it's located at Math Inspired, part of education.ti.com. First, let's review the equation of a quadratic function in vertex form. f of x equals a multiplied by x minus h quantity squared plus k, where a, h, and k are parameters. The vertex is easily accessible from this form. It's the h value followed by the k value. The ordered pair h, k is the vertex of this parabola. And the axis of symmetry is the equation x equals to the x value of the vertex, x equals h. The screen that you see on the left is the TI Inspired document that's available at Math Inspired for this activity. We're going to move to page 1.2 and explore some components of this activity. Please be aware that there are both teacher notes and a student activity located at the website along with this TI Inspired document. In another video, we discuss the effects of changing the a value in the parabola. The current graph, f of x equals to x squared before a was changed was the parent function. Let's think about how the value of a affects this graph. When a is changed, does the vertex change? If so, how? When a is changed, does the graph open up or down? And how does the a value affect that? We know that we cannot use an a value of zero because that would give us the graph f of x equals to zero or the graph of a horizontal line. So consider how the vertex changes or does not change. How does the value of a affect the graph opening up or down? And how does the value of a affect the shape of the graph? Let's summarize these effects. As you may have noted, whenever the a value is greater than zero, the graph opened up. When the a value is less than zero, the graph of the parabola opens down. The vertex of each of these graphs is at zero, zero. When a is greater than one, the absolute value of a is greater than one. So that could be in this particular case right now where a is negative, but the absolute value of a is greater than one is a vertical stretch. The values are in this case decreasing more rapidly than the parent function values because of that multiplier. When the absolute value of a is between zero and one, we have a vertical compression function values are increasing less rapidly when compared to the parent function. So now let's explore what happens with another one of these parameters. We'll reset the value of a back to 1, as it would be for the parent function. And now let's consider what happens to the parent function's graph when h increases. So when we compare this particular graph to the graph that we saw of the parent function, how does this graph compare? When h is negative, how does the graph compare to the graph of the parent function? Pause the video for just a moment and write down your thoughts about these two questions and then come back to the video. When the value of h is positive, we notice that we have a horizontal translation to the right, that number of units. So when h is equal to 2, compared to the parent function, we have a horizontal translation to the right two units, and the vertex is now at 2, 0. The h value is 2, but the y value of the vertex is still 0. When h is a negative number, we have a horizontal translation, and the horizontal translation is the number of units. In this case, we are translated three units to the left, 
but the H value is negative 3, or in this case, negative 4. And the vertex is the H value followed by a Y value of 0, negative 2, 0 in this case. So we had a horizontal translation, two units to the left. Now Judy will reset the H value to 0, and we're going to consider what happens in our other parameter, K. So we're going to think about what happens to the vertex of these parabolas when the value of k is changed. What happens to the vertex of these parabolas when the k is changed? And also, how, do that, that does, also how does the value of k affect the graph? So think about these two questions. And if you will, pause the video, write down your thoughts, and then come back to the video. When K is increased, we have a vertical translation. The graph moves upward. When K is decreased, we also have a vertical translation, but the graph moves downward. You may have noted that the vertex of the parabola still has an X value of zero, but the Y value of the vertex is the value of K. So changes in the value of K, we have this vertical translation, either upwards or downwards, and the vertex is zero comma K. Now let's put these pieces together. Here's a question to think about. Suppose you had a parabola whose A value is equal to 2, and the vertex is at negative 4, negative 3. We'd like to think, you, ask you to think about what would the equation of the quadratic function in vertex form look like. And now ask you to pause the video and write down the equation of this quadratic function in vertex form. If A is equal to 2, we know that we have a greater multiplier than with the parent function. So Judy's going to change the A value to 2 on the graph. And of course, we would find that we would see an increase in the function values rising more rapidly. And so on the right-hand side, if you were writing this equation, you would start with Y is equal to 2. Just as she started out there, Y equals and then we'll change the H value to negative 4. We have a horizontal translation, 4 units to the left. And then the K value is changed to negative 3. So the equation is shown at the bottom. F of X equals 2 multiplied by X quantity, X plus 4 quantity squared minus 3. And remember, the reason we have x plus 4 is the equation would be f of x equals 2 multiplied by x minus a negative 4 quantity squared plus k. Think about the vertex, negative 4, negative 3. When you're using a TI Inspire handheld or the software, you could actually open a new document or insert a page in the current document in which you're working. And if we insert a graphs page here on the handheld, you could press Control Document to insert a page and choose graphs. We're going to graph the parent function f of x equals x squared. If you think about this equation, we could also think of it as f of x is equal to 1 multiplied by x minus 0 quantity squared plus 0, the parent function. If you move the cursor very close to the vertex, you'll see a very small four-way arrow. You can grab that function, grab in quotation marks to grab it, and move it from left to right or up or down, and see our horizontal and vertical translations, and also see the equation update with these translations. 
You may press escape to drop the parabola at any location or to drop the graph. Then if you move somewhere else on the graph, I always say near one of the sides of it, and see a different type of symbol, then we can dilate this graph and you can see your values of A change. So you can investigate these independently or you can use the TI Inspire document where you can control the values of A, H, and K more easily. Now let's have a final challenge for you. We'd like for you to consider the graph of this function, f of x equals negative 2 multiplied by x minus 5 quantity squared plus 4. I'd like you to describe this graph when compared to the graph of the parent function. Consider your translations, how the value negative 2 would affect the graph. You may wish to write down the equation of the axis of symmetry as well as the vertex. And also consider the domain and range of this function. And, of course, sketch a graph. For other videos, go to education.ti.com or the TI Education YouTube channel.